saying is what winds up happening is that they stop believing and they go to something else. Yeah. And see then they might try to come back later, but if you believe and you accepted that, you can't come back. Yeah, yeah. Don't, yeah, that, just don't just say because persecution, by and by he gets offended. Feel me? People get to mocking. You know them, them joining aunties, them uncles that are joining you out the house. You are Israel who? Right. Everybody <laughs> laughing, spilling whiskey. <laughs> 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 that good at book. You already know. See, you gotta have a level of thick skin in this walk, man. Because your family will turn you away from the truth quick. You come around, boy, and be like, oh man, I'll be your ass. No, I don't even believe that no more. Man, this is all good. They'll seduce you. You will see that fell amongst stony places. Because it should be the opposite. You come around, they should be like, hey, look, so and so coming up. We're Bobby coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, don't mention nothing about the Bible. Don't mention nothing about no chosen people. Don't talk about World War III. Don't say nothing about nothing. Because he's going to start talking his Bible. They need to be the opposite. You look like, he, look, you got the truth. You serve the most high, right? These people can't have you on. Uh, eggshells and needles when you come around. Right. Now you got the truth. Yo, you don't come around boastful, but come around a show of what you're saying. Man. You know what I'm saying? Because they ain't got nothing to debunk it. They just in their feelings. Right. right? So after so many times of having the word a certain way, they be all, oh, hold on, Uriel coming up. You feel me? Hey, don't mention nothing about notes, nothing. Right? I'm telling you, look, they ain't already going the house. And by the time you get there, it'll be like, oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It'd be small talk. Yeah. You know, Adrian Pearson had a good game today. <laughs> okay. Did you see the LeBron play? Yeah. Yawn. Let's get to it. <laughs> you already know. And you also know why as soon as you walk in the door, you get quiet. Yeah. 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 Come on, Verse brother. 22. Yeah. He also that receiveth seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the cares of this world mm. and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. So you got brothers like that too, you know what I'm saying? Heard the word, but guess what? The deceitfulness of riches and the curse of his life yeah. choke that word about him. And he become unfruitful, man. He ain't just the gospel no more. Gotta get my money, dog. Shorty can't eat no books. <laughs> you heard that? You heard about that? You be like, wow, my brother been sown among thorns. That's crazy. But you get that. You get all them different spirits that come around. Whether it's the wayside, stony places, or thorns, man. Or on good ground. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna get all that. But see, when you see the actions and how they fall away, or how it make them stronger, you know what seed is who. You'll know. Now that brother you see that fell on the ground right there. He's spreading the word, he's growing. You know what I'm saying? He's humble. You dig? Like there's a couple brothers in here that was real young when they first but then they, you know, been studying for a couple years. You're like, what? What studying? Look at that they throw. Quote scripture, calling it. You like, mm hmm He's being fruitful. You see what I'm saying? So you can witness these things even amongst your own setting of where you at. Yeah, right. What kind of seed is each individual in earth? Yeah. Right? That cause for us to self-check, self-examine, and pray we a seed that fell on st uh, not stony ground. Good ground. <laughs> Good ground. Right. And not stony ground and thorns. Yeah. And see, you also have to look, look at this and remember this about the work that you put in and see how that work grows itself. Yeah, they gonna call you and you gonna put a little water on them, but and, and then you will tend them a little bit, but you always have to let them uh, spring up on their own to a certain degree because you'll know how what ground they fell on by whether they coming back or not. Now, if you put in some work for somebody and they constantly calling you and they ask questions, they ask for scriptures, they steady on their grind because they are being nurtured. They, they got good sun, they got good water, they got good ground, and you see them come. But see, cause the reason why I say sit back and watch them and let them make the moves, because we know we, me especially, I'm going to call. And I'm going to check on you and I'm going to do this, and then you, when you don't get the phone being answered or right. this and that, so this is lesson learned. The fact is you let them show what they do. Because if they, if, if they are on good soil with good water and good sun, they gonna grow up, you gonna know they're growing because they gonna let you know that. 
Yeah. But if they say okay and you don't hear from them no more, or or every now and then or something like that, you gotta let that go. Yeah, you, you gotta know. let you got that shows you what ground they fell on. Yeah, you know what you're dealing with at that point. You know what I'm saying? Stony ground, thorns are by the wayside. Oh, on good ground. Alright, let's read my brother. Verse 23. But he that received the seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it. And understands it. Come on, bro. Which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth fruit, bringeth forth some in hundredfold, mm -hmm. some sixty, some thirty. No, they were fruitful. They spread the message of the coming kingdom. They were fruitful with the spirit that the Most High gave. They didn't sit on it. They didn't bury it. You feel me? They didn't let the, the, the curves of the world choke in the bottom of them. Like, you know, some people benefit worshipers. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's all good as long as I got a job or something, or money's my pocket. But as soon as something goes left field, it's a little inconvenience for you, the most high don't even on their lips no more. You feel me? They ain't stop get around in that lady, dog, you know, whatever. Hey, trip off this too. In this parable, it's called riches. It's the deceitfulness of riches. Trip off that. Riches can deceive you. Quick, because somebody that's broke and say, yeah, to anything, oh, yeah. Anything. No, I got this, uh, I got about 20 pounds you can knock off over here. Oh, yeah, bet, for sure. <laughs> for sure, yeah, <laughs> broke. Huh? <laughs> Trip off that. Somebody tell you, yeah, on any type of desperate circumstances. Yeah. Right? But again, what the fruit of his actions is, which you need to be weighing up. What's really happening? All right, now we be at but read. Verse 24. Yeah. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which soweth good seed in his field. Uh -huh. But while men slept, his enemy came, mm -hmm. and so tares among the wheat and went his way. Mm -hmm. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, excuse me, then appeared the tares also. Mm -hmm. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, this thou, this not thou, so good seed in thy field, from whence then hath these tares? We understand what it is. The kingdom of heaven is like a man planting good seed in his field. Okay? He goes to sleep, his enemies show up and tamper with his product. Huh? Tares are in the field now. Meaning, meaning something that's not uh, sufficient for food. Like you got wheat, the grain that you harvest, and the stuff that's bad you burn, you get rid of it. All right, come on, brother. 28. He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. Who done this? An enemy. Mm -hmm. the, the servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? The servant's like, Well, look, we can go take them seeds up now. If your enemy did this, let's go uproot your enemy seeds right now. That's good. Let's get it. Come on, brother. Then he said, Nay. Lest why he gather up the tares, uh -huh. he root up the wheat with them. Why? Because the wheat and the tares, once it's been tampered with, they kind of go together. The separation got to come at harvest time. So you can go take out the who you think is a bad uh, plant or a bad seed and be taking out somebody that's righteous. Right. Let's read, my brother. Let them both grow together until the harvest. Until when? Until the harvest. Okay. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them. To what? And bind them in bundles to burn them, uh -huh. but gather the wheat into my barn. So we see what happened to the tares. The tares get burned, but the wheat get kept and put up in the storehouse, the barn. All right, now we ain't going to leave you hanging. We're going to let Christ himself explain this parable to me. Jump down to 34. Verse 34. All these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables. And without a parable spake he not unto them, that it might be, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, mm. I will open my mouth in parables. Ooh. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundations of the world. You know what that is? That's the Old Testament. Psalms. Yeah. That's Psalms. That's the book of Psalms. Is that Christ and the New Testament quoting the Old Testament again? Come on, bro. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house. And his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. The disciples were like, Master, you got to say, hey, break that down for us. <laughs> we want to know what this means. Right. All right, come on. We're going to give them the answer. Let's read. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. Is the Son of Man, the Messiah. 
Let's read. The field is the world. The field is what? The world. Come on. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, uh -huh. but the tares are the children of the wicked one. You see that? So now we know what we're playing with. Right? We got field. We got the, uh, the soul of the seed. We got good seeds, bad seeds. We know what we're dealing with it. And the field is the world. Let's read. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The who? The devil. The deceiver. The devil. Come on. The harvest is the end of the world, mm. and the reapers are the angels. <laughs> As therefore the tares are gathered and burned into the fire, in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The end of this world of this age. Right? And our people cannot get mad at the most high for this because they do it every season during harvest season. Keep their good crops and burn their bags. We, we rehearse that year in, year out. Every time we harvest, you keep what's good, you burn what's bad. You keep what's good, you burn what's bad. So how can you get mad at the Lord for keeping what's good and burning what's bad? You make the same judgment year in, year out, day in, day out. Now clean that. What you cleaning for? It's dirty. Who told you it was dirty? Huh? You always cleaning something or straightening something up. Uh, getting rid of that which is undesirable. You do that daily. Right. Why the Lord can't do it when it's time for judgment? Right. Let's read. Verse uh, 40. And therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity. Mm and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be a wailing, and there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Woof. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Mm. Who, hath, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. I see that right there. <clears throat> Just like the terrors are burnt, so shall the wicked be burnt in the end. Mm. Whoever got ears to hear, let him hear. I mean, everybody got ears, but everybody's not listening. Or don't walk into the message found in the scripture. But the Lord put it right on your level. What you do daily, day in, day out, get rid of the undesirable, clean the filth, you're going to do the same thing. Huh? And if you got ears to hear, you better listen up. You did. We got one more. Luke 19, my brother. Luke 19. Luke 19. Go through the Lord's parables and you start learning, get some understanding. And what he's talking about. He's talking about accountability. If you will be held accountable for no. You ain't received what the Lord gave you just so you can sit up on it and just brag to everybody about something. See, I know the truth, dog. <laughs> I know the truth, see? We're supposed to be teaching others and applying it to ourselves. We're trying to get a better day. But at least strive for it. That's the thing. We ain't got too lazy. And then we depend on traditions of men instead of going back to what the word says. I really didn't get a lot of chance no more. Right? Like the, like the iPhone 6 and outsmarted the Lord. <laughs> and that got a malfunction. They, they talking about sending it back. Some type of app got a malfunction. Or something. Every year. Every, every year it's something. Like, come on, man. Let's get into this. Luke 19. Uh, start at verse 12. 12 to 26. We read a witness of it in Matthew 25 earlier. But uh, we're going to end it with this right here. Luke 19, verse 12. He said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom mm -hmm. and to return. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds. Ten what? Ten pounds. <laughs> come on. <laughs> and said to them, occupy till I come. You're talking about money, man. You're talking about money. <laughs> But no, 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 the Lord told him. We always skip over them words right there. It says, occupy until I come. Right? Handle your business until I show back up. I'm leaving you in charge of what I give you. And in, in, in our days, he pointed to us certain portions of his spirit. Right? Occupy. Handle your business with what I gave you until I return. Occupy until I come. That's what the Lord told him. Right? So there is a measure of accountability. 
What do you do? Right? Come on, brother. Verse 14. Yeah. But his citizens hated him mm. and sent a message after him saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. Mm. And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him, to whom he had given the money, that he might know how much every man had gained by trade. Right, so the Lord's going to be opening them books on Judgment Day. Feel me? What did you do with what he gave you? Right, did you get lazy, slothful? Right? Or was you out here sincerely trying to get better and spread this word? Kingdom of bus. Huh? It's the lake or the gates. Wait, which one is it? Like, well, it either was that or what? It either was you knew it, I didn't say nothing, I was scared of what folks was going to say. Uh, or it was like, oh, you know what? That's the truth right there. Hey, hey they're going to cut my tongue out and get me to stop speaking that. Which one is it? <clears throat> Let's read, brother. 16. Then came the first, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained ten pounds. Would you get the one which you gave me? That pound you gave me, I got ten of them back. Come on, brother. And he said unto him, and he said unto him, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in that very little, have thou authority over ten cities. Ain't nobody heard that yet. Job well done. Well, good and faithful servant. You took care of the little that I gave. Right, because even, even where we at now, it ain't even a glimpse into what we gonna be. You know what I'm saying? You took care of the little that I gave you. Come on in and have authority over 10 cities. That's beautiful. Let's read, bro. 18. And the second came, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained five pounds. Mm. And he said likewise to him, Be thou also over five cities. Yeah, the Lord will be happy. Remember, he's bringing the kingdom to earth. Right? And everybody got to play their part. To earth he's bringing the kingdom, right? The whole planet earth will be under subjection of the God of his body, right? And his son will be sitting on that throne, and then we as his people are going to be co heirs with him in his kingdom. co heirs the Bible says. co heirs Come on, brother. Yeah. And he said likewise to him, be thou also of the fire city. So uh, showing the Lord will be giving out assignments. You want to be in charge of this much, this much, this much. Everybody according to what you did and what he gave you. Mm. Let's read, my brother. And another came, saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound which I have kept laid up in a nap. Look at him. He ain't bring back ten. He ain't bring back five. He ain't even bring back another one. He went and hid his Lord's money. He got slothful and lazy. Here you go, Lord. This is what, I, this is what you gave me. There you are, wrapped in a knot. There you go. Wow. That's how you, that's how you treat the Lord. Let's read, my brother. For I fear thee, because thou art an austere man. A what man? Austere. Who know what austere man? Oh, Jehazi K. Black and hard and raw. Oh, yeah. Black and softness. Yeah. Yeah. A very strict, stern man. Matthew 25, they, they called him flat out for them. This is the second witness to Matthew 25. All right, so I fear you, Lord, because you was an austere man. Come on, bro. Thou takest up that thou laidest not down, and reapest that thou didst not sow. Right. And he said unto him, Out of thine own mouth will I judge thee, mm. thou wicked servant. Thou what servant? Thou wicked servant. Mm. Thou knewest that I was an austere man. Taking up that I lay not down, and reaping that I did not sow. Mm. Wherefore then gavest not thou my money into the bank, that at my coming I might have required my own with use. But so what this dude did was come with an excuse. If you got the fear of the Lord, that should motivate you to do what he said. Right? You know, my son ain't playing, guess what? You're going to get on your good foot. You're going to do what he said. Right? You ain't going to say, okay, that's why I ain't doing that, Lord, because I'm scared of you. He can eat. In other words, he was coming up with an excuse. The Lord ain't give you the truth for you to come up with an excuse. Get out here and get it done. Come on, brother. And he said unto them that stood by, Take from him the pound and give it to him that had ten pounds. He ain't doing nothing with it anyway. Take the little that I gave him and give it to somebody that know what they doing. That know what they doing. You see what I'm saying? And then also he told them you could have put it in the bank at least. Got some interest off of it. Right? So if we talking spiritually, brother, you could at least turn on one brother and then he could have told everybody. Right, right, right. Now that would have 
worked out for you. You didn't even do that. You took the truth and buried it. Laid it in the night. The Lord called it wicked. Let's read, bro. 25. And they said unto him, Lord, he had ten pounds. For I say unto you that unto every one which hath shall be given, uh -huh. and from him that hath not, even that he hath shall be taken away from him. Come on. But those my enemies. Christ got enemies. Those my enemies. Come on, bro. Which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. See what he gonna be saying that day? Huh? You don't want no part of the Lord? You don't want no part of the Son? He gonna be giving orders to the service to toe tag and bag. Right. Huh? That's serious, brother. So that let you know what they put us all in the mindset of what? There is an accountability. Like you accepted this truth, you done came into it, you understand it's the faith in Christ, it's the commandments of the most high. You did with Israel, you know, trying to wake our people up, you do all of that, you know all that, and you take that heavenly joy and you hide that. And you don't get these little brothers off the streets, nothing. Nothing. Wow, what you do with that? And we bumping the brothers all the time. Oh man, stop hitting on them. My daddy told me this. And I have known this boy over 30 years. I ain't never heard you say nothing about the Bible. What you mean you've been known this? Oh, you you buried the truth. That was you did. You put the little truth in the knife. Go ahead, brother. Uh, just I just got a couple of scripts before we close that I uh, want to get just to show uh, it's going to be different resurrections when we do, when we are resurrected according to what we did put into this life. Uh, Malachi chapter 3, uh, 16 through 18, and also Revelation chapter 20, 12 through 15. You're going to reread them, my brother. Okay. Read them. <clears throat> that Malachi 3 is old. Mm -hmm. That deal was old. What was the second one? Revelation 20, 12 through 15. Yeah. Jay? Yeah. Malachi 3, 16 through 18. Yeah. Every man gonna be rewarded according to the work he put in. Everybody. You know, I mean in the end it's still eternal salvation. You know what I'm saying? But your aim should be to be great in the kingdom of heaven. That should be your aim. Why would why would you be aiming to be great in eternity? You know what I'm saying? Like how is your mindset you just put on the back burner like yeah, all right, whatever. Y'all want to catch up to that later on. What were those again, Jay? No, 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 no. Chapter 20, uh, 15 through uh, I think what I said was, I mean, 12 through 15. Chapter 20? Yeah. 12 through 15, yeah. Now right, let's read that. We almost out of this last two scriptures. We're going to close it out with a psalm and we done done it. Uh, Psalms 103, yeah, for the end. You, are you reading them, uh, Chester Gear? Yeah, I got it. All right. Malachi 3, 16 through 18. Verse 16. All right, Shalom, y'all got to say. All right, Lord. All right. Everybody. That's what's up. All right, here we go. Then, they that the Lord spake often one to another. How about spake what? Spake often. One to another. Those that fear the Lord often speak to one another about the Lord on the record. Like you do all the time. Yeah, there'd be barely a few, like, if you're around the birds, there'd be a barely a few moments where we would, no, no, I don't like the cowboys this year. So. <laughs> you know what I mean? But for the most part, it'd be right in the script. Five, five, five. Get the Those that fear the Lord talk about them all the time. All the time. All right, come on, brother. And the Lord walked mm -hmm. and heard and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the law mm -hmm. and that thought upon his name. You see that? A book of remembrance is written for those that fear the most high and that think on his name or his authority. Come on, brother. And they shall be mine, said the Lord of hosts. In that day, when I make up my jewel. My what? My jewel. The Lord got some jewelry. <laughs> He can he, he confer those that fear him to his blame, his jewel, his jewels. Right. <laughs> Lord got jewel. Come on, brother. And I will spare him as a man spared his own son that served him. Woo. Then shall he return and discern between the righteous and the wicked. Woo. 
between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. No doubt. No doubt. What's the next one you got? Revelation 20? Revelation 20. See? And that's harvest time right there. There's a separation of the righteous from the wicked. Then you'll know, you understand me, and like, why? Revelation 20, the brothers going to 12 through 15. Revelation chapter 20. There's something great coming for those that fear the most high and serve him. Believe in the testimony of his son. And serve him in spirit and truth. It's a great reward waiting on him. It's a great reward. Somebody wants to say, well, I don't know what's the benefit of believing it. I mean, what else are your options? Right. Who else talking about bringing the kingdom? What other God? Who else talking about the of fire? Right. You ain't got it, man. That's what I'm saying. Like, there's only one whose words are still echoing through eternity. Who called it down and it's back, back to back to back to back. You know what I'm saying? Either that's just a mere coincidence, coinky dink, or you got to call that what it is, man. That's the spirit of the Most High. Because the spirit of the Most High filleth all things and knoweth all things. I thought about that the other day too, about the Jehovah's Witnesses who believe that once they die, they cease to exist. They yeah, cease to exist. So poof, they're gone. Why are you even trying then? <laughs> I mean, if that's your reward. You know, you got the book. Believe it or not, they have the book that they don't read. But you have the book that tells you this is the way to the kingdom. This is the way to the lake of fire. You hold this book in your hand. Okay, but you say where it's not found, that you just don't go poof. If that's what I believe, shh, I'll be like, I'm having a party tonight in my house for all y'all. And I'm setting it out. Because I done got all this ill-gotten game. I'm going to share it with all of you. We're going to eat good. We're going to drink good. We're going to party. We're going to do this because I have nothing to fear. Because when this is over, it poof. <laughs> and I'm also warning y'all to watch your mouths. Watch out, women, because I'm doing all that. Because <laughs> <laughs> right. right. I have nothing to fear. Right. It's poop. Because it's poop. It's poop. It's poop. It's poop. Why am I even trying? Why am I walking down the street in a hot sun, right. with a shirt and towel, knocking on your door to tell you poof? Right. <laughs> huh? Why am I doing this? What is the reason that I, 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 I'm serving this? <laughs> So well and so hard, and I'm going out of my way, and I'm doing all these things. Right, man. That makes sense. You see how they don't, no fear of judgment takes the fear of God out of them. You know, the Lord got a spot that He owns called the Lake of Fire. That's going to have you conduct yourselves right. Right? Because you panic when the AC go out. You know, some of the AC go out, Negro be panicking. I'm hot. You ain't ready for the Lake of Fire. Ain't none of us on. Ready for, you ain't ready for everlasting burns. Mm -hmm. Let's get it, bro. Revelation 20. You got that? Revelation 20, verse 12. <clears throat> and I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and the books were open. Now remember, we just got to read about how they've been put in the book of remembrance for those who read the most side. Right. The books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their work. According to what? <laughs> according to their work. So you're going to be judged according to what you did in this life. Come on, brother. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man according to their work. Right, hell in this scripture right here means the grave. Right. Grave, she old, grave. Come on, brother. And the dead and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. All right, so hell, hell itself can't be a fiery place thrown into another fiery place. Right, right, right. Death and hell or death and the grave were cast into the lake of fire. The death is no more death. So right there in the old book that they, that they carry, it says no more death is what that means. Death itself, everybody's going to live forever. Whether you in the lake of fire, you're right. still alive. All eternity, you're not dying. You're not escaping that. It just means there's no more death. No one else will die. He's taking death and hell, which is the grave, and he's casting them into the lake of fire. So if you're taking death, no more death, no more grave. It's for eternity. Just which way you want to spend your eternity. 
There's also different uh, torments in the lake of fire, just like the different levels, like different levels in the kingdom. Like he knocking all that, you know what I'm saying? He knocking yes, Josephus. Come on, bro. Verse 14. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast 